Hi everyone, so today in my video I'm going to be trying to do Mulan. Um, this will be my first attempt, so please bear with me. Um, I've done loads of Disney characters before, but I haven't tried Mulan yet. So first thing you want to do is I've got a white nail tip. I mean, if you're doing it on clients, then you want to just do white base, because that makes the colours pop better. And then you want to do a matte top coat. So I'm just using the Aero Puffing Matte Top Coat. Using the matte makes the paints flow better and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to pencil it out beforehand and it just helps it stick better and it comes out better because when you have the shiny one it won't, it won't show so much. So I'll pop that in the lamp. So you want to get yourself an HB pencil. I use this one, the retractable ones, because they're really tiny nibs. Um, the reason you want HB is because if you start going more towards the Bs, it'll be too dark and you'll start seeing it through the design. But if you start going towards the Hs, you won't be able to see what you're doing. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to draw a grid. And this is why. So what I've done is I've taken the nail plate, template, and I've sectioned it out into different sections. Because what we're going to do is on the nail we're going to put this grid exactly the same as this and we're going to try and pick up on the different shapes rather than the features so for instance you're going to look at this eye you don't want to think of it as an eye you want to think of it as an oval or the triangle of the eyebrow or the corner of the mouth you don't want to think of it as a as a feature you want to think of it as a shape so let's give this a go Excuse the little noises, my little puppy's deciding to run round while I'm doing this. <laughs> so you want to uh, try and work out roughly where the middle is. So I tend to do a little line up here and a little line here. And you want to just try and join this up. And you want to do it as lightly as possible that you can see it. But not too dark that it will show up through the gel polish. So I don't know if you guys can see that. If I put there we go. Can you can you can kind of see that? Now to do the sideways ones, rather than going across here, because you might end up pulling down because of the curve of the nail, you want to twist sideways. So if you've got a client, instead of having their hand like that, you want to twist it like that. So you want to work out where the halfway line is, which is roughly about here. And you just Draw the line, like so. So I've done it in three sections as well in between. So you want to work out a third and a third. I mean, this doesn't have to be majorly precise, but as close as you can possibly get. And then, just draw the lines in. Like so. Remembering not going too dark, but dark enough that you can see it. And there you have the grid, if you can see. Right, what we're going to do next, so I'll bring that, actually I'll bring that into focus there. What you want to do is, I'm going to start at the top here. So this is obviously the curvature of the nail, and you want to follow that curve around here. So you're going from this top corner here, almost to the little bit here right so going from here roughly to about here I mean these are just guidelines they don't have to be perfect but if you can get them as perfect as possible that'll make your life so much easier when you're doing the colouring the painting sorry so there can you see sort of Right, so we're going to look here. You've got a sort of triangle. So what we're going to do, work out the distance between here and here. So I think, looking at it, it's roughly there. And it's going almost to the corner. So I'm going to bring it up like this. So it's just about here. And you want to bring it down, curving it as you go. There, can you see? I, you can sort of see. Sorry, the lighting's not brilliant. Right. 
So next bit I'm going to go on to this side to make it easier so we can finish it off. So you can see it doesn't quite go to the edge of the nail here. So what I want to do is draw that line. And it goes off up the top here. So we'll make that as curved as possible. Sorry, I'm trying to do this so you can see it while I'm doing it. There, and there's nothing else in that bit, so it's just that here. Um, right. I'm, I mean, I'm working this out as I go. So I'm going to come down to this bit here just because I want to give myself something for the head to sit on. Um, so down here, I mean, I've cut off a little bit of the picture, which is a bit annoying, but I'm guessing it just goes and follows down here. So what I'm going to do is go from here, which is top of our skirt, and pull it out like this. Uh, we then got her sash bit around the middle, coming here to here. So I'm going to follow that line here and bring it out to roughly there. I'm not going to do the detail bit yet, I'm mostly going to focus on the outlines at the moment. So, next bit I'm going to do is coming up here to about this bit here. And then I'm going to pull that across like that. And that's her sash. I'm going to follow this bit here to do this triangular bit here. So that's going from this bit here up to around about here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly curve it around here so I've got that curvature of her back as well. I'm going to draw the tiny bit of her arm as well here, this little bit here, just so I've got the details in there. And also I'm going to carry that on and it goes almost to the point here of the top of her sash. So that's coming around here. So that's her arm. That's so that I can know where how far I'm going with this one. So this one is about two thirds of the way up from here. Following along. Up like that. And that's her chest part. I'm then going to bring this out into a point just so that I can finish that bit off, like that. Right, so we're going to try and do the curvature of her shoulder. All we need to do is follow this line up here, so it's going to roughly here. Now it's always going to be easier, it's a little bit closer to the edge there actually. It's easier if you put the points of each part that you're doing, because otherwise if you start trying to guess where it is, you could draw this line like say if I did it to that bit, it would be too far that way, so you've got to get rid of all the line. Whereas if you do the point, you can follow up to the point and you'll get it sort of right. So I colour that, draw that bit in there. Right, so that's, and then we're going to do her bit of her hair down here, which is following from the point here. I was going into a circle bit here. So you're literally just following all this bit here following the template down here um, so there's one more little bit there which is her hairband which is at the top of her shoulder going like that right so next bit I'm gonna do I'm gonna come into here I'm gonna do this bit here so I'm gonna draw the top of her arm which is roughly here and then it's coming off and going down to here which is about two, one third of the way up so following from here do about a third of the way up which is here remembering it's got a kind of slight dip in it because we've got to get the structure of our muscles as well I mean, remembering this is just kind of basic, we're going to go back into it later and go over it again with the paints anyway. So you can sort of see that it's starting to come along, it's starting to get there. 
Um, next bit I'm going to do, I'm going to just do that little corner bit there, just to follow it on. And then I'll carry on into this bit, which is not too far into the neck, into the actual grid. So that's her top of her arm finished. Start going in with her cardigan bit. I suppose you'd call it a cardigan, a bolero, whichever you're calling it. And it's basically a parallel line to the arm. So you want to follow like this. And then we're going up through here again, starting to get closer at the top. And it's stopping here. So we want to work out. It's in line. It's just a bit before there. So you've got the line here. It's almost like where I wanted to put the arm originally, but up here. So you're halfway up. And that's like that. So now that we've done that bit, we can start to bring this bit in. You join those two up. And there's almost her shoulder done. Right, now this darker green bit, I'm going to come in. It's basically doing the same again, parallel to the uh, parallel to the arms. Coming up, going thinner up here, and then coming up a little bit here for her collar. Not too far, just a little bit. In there. Right, so we're going to do her neck bit. I'm going to move this bit here up a little bit not too much just a little bit because I don't think that's high enough there we go and then what I'm going to do is going to get some nail cleanser on my brush just going to make sure it's clean because what I'm going to do I'm going to take that bottom line off so we're not following that line let's get some cleanser on my brush going in and that just rubs it away a bit there we go it's just to get rid of the bulk of it right so her neck bit now we're going to come in and we want to go halfway along here so it's from here to here so halfway along like that um, and then this bit here it's a little bit further in from the middle bit not too far you don't need too big a bit so it's literally like that so we're going to do sort of an overly bit here for a chin which is slightly off from here coming down here and then it's almost a straight line there so we're going Like that. Can you sort of see what I'm doing? Yeah. I mean, you want these lines to be as light as possible. I'm doing them a bit darker so you guys can see it. But you want to do them as light as you can. So you don't have to worry about it later. So, next bit I'm going to do is I'm going to do her hairline on this bit. So I know how far up I'm going with her head. So I'm going to follow this line round. It's basically going all the way around, like so. And I'm going to bring this bit here that you see that we did there. I'm going to bring that down, and it goes all the way down to where the hair bobble is. So it's almost coming off the nail a bit. Mm. Next bit, I'm going to I'm going to do this bit next. So that. I'm going to start from here, roughly. I'm going to almost bring it up in a circle up here so that it goes off the nail. Like this. And I'm going to come in later and do that little quiffy bit, the little spare bit. Right, so next bit, I'm going to come off and do this bit of her head. So I'm going to do all the outlining first and then I'll come in with the features again in a minute. So we want to go just over halfway here. So like that. 
and then this bit we're going basically joining up here and here but making sure there's a big arc you see you can kind of see there uh, what are we on now so I'm going to come in with this bit of the face here so I want to take it halfway so her head still needs to go out a bit and then come in so we're arcing it around like that and then we'll bring her neck up here because there's still a bit of neck here as you can see here tiniest little triangle and then I'm going to put her ear in which is from about halfway and up like that so like I said it's just literally working out where everything is and we'll, and we'll go further on later uh, and I've also forgotten to put the bit, top bit of her bobble which is yeah um, let's just bring this down a minute so you can see it zoom into her face right so I'm going to start with her lips because I always struggle with their lips especially on this tiny canvas so it's almost like an arc in this one corner here which is the one second line down here so they are going to be tiny because of the way I've made the picture it's going to be absolutely tiny and then we'll pull it up into a triangle here only the tiniest little bit we don't need much at all and here we're going to almost do a little arc and then we're doing the um, what's it called the bow of the mouth here so this is going to be fiddly I mean this will be easier to colour in later you can sort of see how it's going right I am going to put the nose in now because you'll be able you should be able to see through the white and we'll just go over and just know where it is so all she has tiny little bit here which is this bit here and tiny little bit here right I'm going to do this eye first I think so we want to go from this point here to almost her hairline here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here I'm not going to bother with the eyelashes I'm not going to bother with the pupils or anything like that because we'll do that with the paint later And I'm also going to add in the eyebrow, the, the bit here, just so that we've got it there. So it's almost in line with where this goes out here. So like that. Right, so it's a bit deceiving this bit because obviously her eyelashes come up here, but her eye starts here, which is just in line to where her head hits this grid here so following up from here and it's in line with the base of this so you want to go from there sorry hitting the camera and it's slightly drooped here and it's about a third of the way this way so third of the way up here slightly drooped might even be who drooped that so I'll go a little bit up yeah that looks better and then draw that in we'll do our eyebrows as well so about here 
she's got triangular eyebrows so comes off the curvature here really yeah so I d you can sort of see that we've done the outlines all the outlines right so I'm going to move this for a minute because I'm going to try and do all the colors right I I'm going to start with her skin tone because that's probably the most difficult part to try and color in so I do it with I'm using aero puffing gel paints so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get number six which is the orange number seven which is the brown and number 12 which is the white so blob of white a blob of brown and a blob of orange Right, so just using preferably an old brush, but I haven't got my old brush with me, so I'm using my detailer brush from Lacente, Lacente D1. So making sure the brush is clean, you want to pick up a tiny bit of brown, start mixing that in. It makes almost like a, a mocha colour. And then adding a tiny bit of orange. And that starts going into the skin tone colour and it's just finding her right tone so if I move that up a minute so you can see she's got a darker feature than that so a bit more brown and it's just layering up the colours to find the right colour bit of orange give it a warmer tone there you go you start seeing it's coming Add a bit more orange, I think. There we go, I need a bit more orange. There we go, you can see now, here we go, got the colour. Tiny bit more. There we go. Right, cleaning that brush off. And then I'm going to go in with my Lacente S1 brush, just because it's really fine and detailed. Picking up some of this. So you want to make uh, use a, f a fair bit. You want to get good coverage on this, and you're just really slowly taking your time colouring in between the lines basically and we're going to do the shading in a bit but for now just focus on colouring in her neck and her head her face sorry yep going around all the bits that we've drawn obviously not worrying about the nose because we'll go over that in a minute I mean, I prefer to do these in layers. I mean, some of you might prefer, well, it depends what paints you use, but some of you can do it in one go, getting a good coverage. I prefer doing it in thin layers so that I can get the coverage that I like. And you try not to get your brush strokes in, like, uh, you cover it at the getting a good coverage so that your brush strokes don't show but if you've got the odd brush stroke it's not too bad because when you put the top coat on it does blend it in but just try not to if you can
And there you go. I don't know if you can see, but you can. I can slightly see where the nose is here. I, I'm, I don't think you can see it on that. But yeah, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to put that in the lamp for a minute in the LED lamp. All right, so next bit, I'm going to come in and try and do the shading around here for the highlighting. So what I'm going to do is take a bit more white and pop it in this corner here. And then just following around here, around here, following down, around the chin. And then coming up underneath here, into this corner, bringing it down around here. But what I'm also going to do is clean off my brush. Clean off my brush. <laughs> and I'm going to use Aero Puffing Matte Top Coat. Pop a little bit on there. And I'm going to place this in the middle here. And what this is doing <laughs> is it's going to slightly blend these two colours together. Because we don't want it to be a definite line. Is we want to blend it as much as possible. And we're going to do the same down here. I think it needs to be lighter than that, the highlighter. So I'm going to put a bit more white in there. That's better. I sort of see it now. Right, clean my brush off. I'm going to go over with the mat again just to um, blend that in a lot. I don't know whether you can see that or not where it's highlighted. I'm also just going to go over these bits here. Just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Just to give it a better coverage. Where I can see any little bits. And all I'm doing is feathering it on. And making sure you clean up any any overspill. Right, so I'm going to pop that in the lamp. What I'm going to do whilst that's in the lamp, I'm going to make a bit of a um, contour, I suppose you call it. Just make it ever so slightly darker. I know they haven't put it in the picture, but it just it just gives it a bit more depth if you add a bit more a bit more to it. Don't need a lot of it. I'm just doing what I'm doing is I'm trying to do it in colour order. So if I've got bits of skin tone, I'll do skin tone. If I've got green, I've got green, I'll do green. Just saves the paints drying up. So make that tiny smidge bit darker. 
so I just want to put the tiniest bit of darker in and I'm just going to do that underneath here so as if her chin is causing a, high, uh, a contour and also what I want to do is I want to bring it around here where her cheek would be by her hair and the tiniest bit here you just want to imagine it like real life so I'm going to mix in some of the top coat actually into that to water it down a bit Right, so now I've done that, I'm going to get a bit of clean top coat, add the tiniest blob here, because the top coat does dry quite quick, so you only want tiny bits at a time. And that is just going to go in here like we did with the highlight, just so that we can blend it, so it's not such a stark line. I'm going to drag this bit back because that dark bit is going too close to the highlighter. Might need to add a bit more highlight to that. A lot of this is just playing around and getting it to the point where you're happy with it. There you go, I don't know if you can see that. I'm popping that in the lamp. Right, while that's in the lamp, I'm just going to start colour it, uh, mixing up the greens. So, Aero Puffing number 10, that's for the green. I need quite a bit of that, so I'll put a big blob. Um, I'm going to put some more white but I'm going to do that separate to the skin tone one so that's going to go there I'm going to need quite a bit I think I'm also going to use the Aero Puffing Chrome Paste which is uh, number 15 and I'm going to pop that there just to do the darker colour right so I'm going to lighten up that green a bit because if you look this green here is a little bit lighter than that. I don't want it too light though, because obviously it's not like a majorly light green. Yeah, so it's about that colour. So I'm just going to go over all of this here. And down here and I'm going to come in and highlight it like I did with this bit here I mean, you can use a bigger brush, brush to fill this in, but I, I just, I personally just prefer doing lots of different strokes using this. It's my all-time favourite brush. This one, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have it. I 
don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but what I'm doing is I'm going around this line here because I'm going to go over it anyway later for the detail, but it's just so that I can still see where it is. Can you see? Uh, sort of. Here. And I'm going to do the same down here. So I'm going to pop that in the lamp. Right, and while that's in the lamp, I'm going to do the highlighter. So what I'm going to take the tiniest bit of that. I'm going to start popping that in the white and mixing that up. Because it's a very pale green. It's not quite white, but very pale green. Alright, so let's go in with this highlight. So it's quite a lot of highlight at the top. So it's coming up around here like that. Obviously, we're going to blend it in in a minute. Um, and then a bit under here. For a back. Like that. Go over that little corner there. There we go. Right. And clean off my brush. Get the matte top coat again. Just a little bit. a blob popping that in there and then softly pulling it softening up that edge I'm just going to go over a bit more the dark a bit clean off my brush to do that little bottom bit what I'm also going to do I'm going to try and pull it towards me because I think a little bit too much. So if I try and pull it towards us, towards her back, it brings it in a bit. You see. And then just dotting it. Popping a bit more of that one on. You can sort of see what I've done, just blending it in. And you're just using soft strokes. I'm going to go over again with that matte top coat just to really blend in what I've just done. You 
yeah, the nice thing about gel polish is once you put the top coat on, that tends to blend it anyway. It's not going to be so so stark lines, but you still want to get it as perfect perfect as you can beforehand. Like that. I'm going to pop that in the lamp. Just realised I forgot to do her ear, so what I'm going to do before I go on to the next bit, I'm just going to colour in her ear. That's better. I thought it looked a bit funny. Right, so, I'm going to go in with that dark green now. Now this dark green's almost spot on, but what I am going to do, I'm going to pop some of this green in as well, just to take the sparkle out a bit. Right, so, just colouring in that line again. And there we go. See, she's starting to come together now. So pop that in the lamp, we're going to flash cure that one for 10 seconds. Alright, so I'll clean my brush off and we're going to go in with this one again, this highlighter, because it's the same colour on both. So we literally just want the tiniest bit on this, we don't want a lot. So if I put the tiniest blob there, clean off my brush. Let's see, yep, that matte top coat. I'm going to put it here and drag it towards the highlighter and then slowly use the tip of my brush to blend it in. It's difficult because it's such a small surface area this bit that you just got to be careful not to put too much. I think I have put a bit too much. So I'm just going to go in with this and just drag it up. And then using the tip of my brush, I'm going to try and blend it as much as I can in this little area. Like so. Let me sort of see it. Sorry, it's not very good lighting. There you go. So I'm going to cure that for a minute. Right, and while that's curing, I'm going to go in and get my blue. So I'm going to use Aero Puffing number three. Pop that there. Quite dark that one, so I am gonna have to put. Um, I'm gonna use Aero Puffing number four, just to brighten it up a bit. Also, more than likely, gonna have to use white. So go in with number twelve again. I'm gonna mix up. There. Mix up this blue here. So take a blob of that, blend in some of that colour with it. See, it's starting to make the right colour because that that um, number, what number is it? Number three on its own is way too dark. So this is just making it more of a royal blue rather than a navy blue. That's pretty cool. Right. So if I move that one a minute. I'm going to do the same again. Colouring in the whole thing and then I'm going to highlight it in a minute. Like so, 
And then I'll go in with this bottom bit as well. So coming around here. Around there. And then fill in the gaps. Can you see? I'm going to add a bit of the tip as well, so... I'm just going over making sure the colour goes across enough and we'll pop that in the lamp. And while that's in the lamp, we're going to make the highlighter. So once again, it's not white, it's a very, very pale blue. So, I'm going to take the tiniest bit of this. A lot of white. It needs to be paler than that. It's I've almost got to use all that white to make it as pale as we need. Yeah, that looks about right. And then... Trying the line there. And the long the base of her back, like that. Clean off my brush, and then we'll go in with the matte top coat again. Just sort of pop that over that bit there. And then I'm going to go in and get some of this blue again. And coming in the other side, like we did with the green. Like I said before, a lot of this is just playing with it until it gets to the point where you're happy with it. Especially when it comes to shading. There we go, so what I'm going to do as well, because I don't know if you saw, but I went over the line a little bit, I'm going to go in with some cleanser. Just 
tidy up around the edge. I know I'm going over it in a minute, but I just I just prefer prefer doing it like that, making sure it's clean before I put it on. There you go. And that one's going to go in the lamp. Right, I'm going to go in next with the red sash. But what I'm going to use, because I haven't quite got the white, right colour red, I think. I'm going to use a bit of 18 of the Aeropuff and Chrome. That'll give it the brownie sort of colour, a bronzy colour. And I'm also going to go in with number five. You, know, you can see number five is way too bright to go in on its own. So that's why I'm thinking I'll pop it with those two, that colour. And I'll see how that goes. I might even pop a bit of number 19. Excuse me, number 19, but I'll see what colour this comes out. I'm going to use my other brush actually to blend that. That's a lot better, that, actually. Right, I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to use this brush, actually, to colour it in, because it's quite a large surface area. going with a lint free pad and some cleanser on that bit I don't know if you saw just went over the blue bit there. I love gel paints right I'm going to use my detailer brush my S S1 and just go around and tidying up those edges and making sure all the brush marks are out So I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a minute. And while I was in the lamp again, I'm going to make another highlighter colour. So I'm just going to get some more 12. And I'm going to pop that on here because I know I'm going to need quite a bit. I'm going to mix up a teeny bit of that and a lot of white. So it almost goes like a really, 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 really pale pink. I'm probably going to need a tiny bit more white, actually. tiniest little bit here again oh, sorry off the camera tiny bit there clean off my brush and go in with the matte top coat again I'm probably gonna oh no yeah it dries quite quick that top coat so you never know whether you need more or not I'm popping that next to it Actually, I probably am going to need some more. That's better. 
and then playing around with it again, blending it in. I mean, the more you practice these, the quicker you get. I mean, I've only done, well, I've done less than 10 Disney princesses in my time, Disney characters, and they've all gotten better and better as I go and quicker and quicker. I mean, I've never done one this detailed before. I just thought I'd give it a go. I mean, I've done it with the grid plenty of times. That's always helped me. But you just adapt as you go. You tend to pick up your own... I mean, you'll watch me, but you'll pick up your own techniques doing it. You'll change how I do it and do it a different way. It's, it's all personal preference. But this is just my tips on how I would do it. Which could be completely different to the way someone else does it. It's, it completely changes depending on who you are. And there you go. I'm almost happy with that. And there we go. I'm going to pop that in the lamp. I'm going to do the colour of her lips now. And it's not actually too far off the highlighter pink. I'm just going to put a bit more red in it to make it a bit more rosy. I'm going to use that on her lips. I mean, I think I should have done the picture a little bit bigger. I should have focused a bit more on her head because her lips and her eyes are going to be really difficult to do. So if you guys do it, maybe take take the picture and zoom it in a bit more and do your grid a bit, uh, a bit more of her face. But like I said, this was a, uh, it was the way I did it today. here we go so literally just want the tiniest little bit Sorry, I'm going off camera a bit. Alright, so I'm also going to go in and just do a little bit of the highlighting and low lighting for now. Clean up the brush off and then go in with a matte top coat. Just to soften those lines. I mean, I am going to try in a minute to go over and do all the detailing, but I have a feeling I'm going to have to do it in pencil because I've made it so small. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to use that red to do the hair bubble. It's the same colour as her sash. There we go. I'm going to put the tiny bit of highlighter and this bit here, blending that in. Just giving it a tiny bit of definition. Right, that's going to go in. 
Right, so I'm going to go in with the black now. I'm going to need quite a bit, obviously, to do her hair. So that's uh, number 11 of the Aero Puffing. Also, <laughs> going to need a bit more white. The S, uh, the number 12. I'm going to pop that there so I can make a grey in a minute to do a highlighting of her hair. And I'm also going to use grey to do... Bring this across. So obviously I'm going to need the grey for this highlighting here and here. But I'm going to use grey to do these this bit here. Tiny bit of her eyeshadow there you can just about see here. But I'm going to use it to do all these lines here so that it's not too dark. I'm going over here. Right, so I'm going to colour in the hair first. Let's get that bit done because then that'll be the bulk of it done. Excuse Sophie, she was asleep just now, something's obviously woken her up. <laughs> obviously with this black you've got to be a bit more careful because it's so dark. It's going to be difficult to try and clean it up. So taking as much time as you need. I'm just going to follow all the lines that I drew in earlier and then colour in around it. I'm actually going to bring this line up so I've got a bit more space to do that hair flick that she's got. I love it when it starts to come together at the end. It's doing the last little bits and it gets exciting. And it's fun, I don't know if you've done it on clients before, but seeing the clients' faces when they're like, what are you doing? And then you're layering it up and they're like, they can start to see it coming together. You can see them getting really excited. fine with this aero puffin as well only the black one that I have to cure it twice sometimes because the black just doesn't seem to set properly um, I mean I'm using the CND shellac lamp so it's only a one minute LED one but I just find sometimes when I'm doing black I gotta set it twice so what I am gonna do is once I've done this main bit I'm gonna set this in the lamp so that when I go back and do the rest of the curing it's almost curing it at the same time rather than having to do it twice, if that makes sense.
right there so I'm gonna pop that one in while it's in the lamp I'm gonna start making the grey just so that it's ready yeah I always take the time when it's in the lamp to make up the other colors rather than sitting there waiting for it what I will do with this grey as well uh, in a minute when I come to use it so I'm going to pop some matte top coat in it which will make it a little bit more um, watered down so it's not so thick viscosity just makes it easier for it to flow and also it's not going to be so in your face when you're doing all the lines right so I'm going to go in and do her flick of her hair here going to use that line that I drew originally for her hair as the guide like that and I'm going to do her eyebrows as well so that means all the black will be oh and her pupils so then all her black will be done So what I'm doing with the eyebrows, getting a bit more on, trying to do it thicker at the top and then as I'm pulling down, pulling the brush up to give it the, sorry it's a bit blurry, to give it the thicker effect at the top, thinner at the bottom. Eyelashes I'm going to leave till last, I always leave the eyelashes till last. So let's do the pupils. starts to come alive when you add her eyes in Ta -da. right is that all the black yeah so I'm gonna pop that in the lamp right so I am going to go in and put the highlight in her hair so then that's all that bit done and then I'll just go in with the detail then so Bringing that down. Goes a bit bigger here. I mean, this technique that I'm using, I've been using it for God knows how long. It works with any character. As long as you can get the template of the nail and pop it on any picture, it'll work. Tiny bit dark on that a little. Where's it going? It's going for her eye. Really fine. Like that. Um, I'm gonna go with my top coat again. Do the usual blending. in there just to separate those lines a bit I'm going to pop a little bit more up here just to darken that bit mm -hmm. there we go so I'm going to pop that in the lamp Right, so while that's in the lamp, 
I'm gonna put a load of matte top coat here because I want to take all this grey and pop that in here and water it right down. Yeah, you can see the viscosity's changed already. Completely different. And it just makes the brush, I don't know if you can see it, much more streamlined. So I don't quite need that much. I'm going to take some of that off for a minute. So take the tiniest little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do her little tiny bit of eyeshadow a minute. Don't need a lot of that because obviously we're going to go over with the eyeliner, but she's got the tiniest bit. Uh, I'm going to use that grey. I'm going to darken it up ever so slightly. I'm going to do her tiny little nose. In a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten that up. Uh, I'll show you in a sec what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around and do all the details on, on the rest of her clothes with this grey. Because I don't want it to be too dark. I don't want it to be so stark. Just want it to be like a little bit of detail. And we're just really softly coming around. Slightly darken that up. Oh, she, she made me jump then. <laughs> Sorry, she made me jump. She saw a bird and didn't know what to do. <laughs> Um, where was I? Okay, so grey. Yeah, we're, we're literally going round. I'm just tidying up round here. I've made it slightly darker because I wasn't too happy with how light it was. I know we want it light, but not that light. And you literally want to make it as thin as you possibly can. makes it so much easier when you put the matte top coat in it because it just thins it out for you. I'm also going to use this to go around her skin here to line her face. And the tiny little bits under her eyes here because I don't want them to be black I want them to be grey I'm also going to try wish me luck guys but I'm gonna try the lips so it's gonna be a lot of holding my breath Alright, so her lips aren't amazing, I will give you that. Her lips aren't brilliant. But what I'm going to do, 
with the nose. I'm going to do what I normally do and get my matte top coat. Put a blob on top and it's going to blend it in. Because I want to thin the lines out. I'm going to cleanse my brush as well and tidy it up with a clean brush. Yeah, the nice thing is when you put the top coat on at the end it all blends it in so it, it's it all blends it in my nose is a bit big I always find the features are the hardest bit to try and get right and so can you see oh you can't quite see it's a bit blurry so what I've done is the matte top coat it's pulled this around so I can give it also a bit of shading up here. I know in the picture it doesn't have shading, but just gives her a bit of an, uh, a bridge of her nose and into here. So I'm going to do the same with her lips as well to dye that line down because the line is too dark. Oh, no, nope. gone the wrong way. The line is way too dark. So I'm going to go in and manipulate it. Because you also don't want to make her look like she's got a moustache. So, I'm going to pop me that in the lamp. Now this is my most favourite bit, is doing the eyebrows, uh, sorry, eyelashes. What I've got to do, is you want the tiniest, tiniest, we're talking tiny bit of black on the end. And you're going to start from this middle bit here and bring the flick out. And then you're going to drag the line down so you're making it as thin as you possibly can. And that's going to give you the definition of the eyebrow, eyelashes. So, here we go. Tiniest little bit. It's easier if you switch it upside down. So if you've got your client's hand, I would turn it upside down. There we go. Starting in the middle. Like that. And then bring it down. And then tidying it up a bit. So again, do it on this side. Start in the middle, sweep, and then down. I've done a better job of that one on the than the first one, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tidy up that first one. Do a bit of cleanser. I'm going to take that off and start that one again. It's so difficult getting these eyelashes right because if they don't look right it's going to throw everything so I might try it this way actually
I still can't quite get it so I'm going to move this up a bit because I think that eye is a bit too tiny bit too closed so like I said cleanse off your brush I might even start it again actually because it's so difficult to get it right That's better. And like I said, this is my first attempt at Mulan anyway. So let's give it a go with her highlighter in the eye. I'm not going to get any more white. I'm just going to pinch some out here. Tiniest little blob. You just want to put a dot. on each side like that and I'm going to pop me that in the lamp for a minute right so last bits now all I'm going to do is get that out of the way and I always do two top coats when I've done nail art just to make sure it's sealed in so I start by doing the normal shiny top coat which I'm going to use the Aeropuff in thinner gel top and depending on how shiny it looks I might go over with a matte top coat most of the time I do because you get to see more of the details but we'll see what it looks like with the shiny might do another shiny top coat but we'll see all right so that's her out the lamp and you can see already as I'm going over that the colors are blending together So it's only the wind. There you go, so I'm popping that in the lamp for a sec uh, minute. Right, so if I were to keep it shiny, this is what it would look like. I mean, I don't mind it personally, I think it's quite nice, but for the sake of this video, I am going to do it matted as well, just so you can see the difference. Because quite a lot of the time, if you've got really detailed work, it's nice to have it matted because you can see all the detail better. So yeah, just going over that with a matte top coat. I mean if you're gonna keep it shiny you just do another shiny top coat on top. And there we go and popping that in the lamp. And here you have her guys. She's all done. So I am going to, seeing as we're in this isolation, I am going to do as many Disney characters as I can just to make up loads of videos. Um, if you've got any characters I mean it doesn't have to be Disney it could be a f Nintendo it could be Looney Tunes anything you can think of any characters that you fancy just pop it in the comments and I'll see what I can do see if I can give it a go I mean all of these I'm just literally doing it off the cuff seeing how I go but this is this is the finished result of Mulan I mean I'll do a better picture in a minute but yeah if you've got any that you want me to try I will give it a go and I'll tell you how I do it and then um, if you want any more help with it just give me a message and I'll see what I can do uh, I'll write everything that I've used in the video down in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon and hope you're all taking care bye